Hey everybody, welcome to a new update preview. Today we're tackling Hydra battles and there's a whole lot to talk about, so I'm just going to get into it. We'll start with Hydra rotations and the general structure of the battles. First, you'll be taking six champions instead of five, lots of extra power. Second, once a champion has been used in a battle against the Hydra, you won't be able to use them again against this boss until the weekly reset. You get three battles a week, so get creative. Now, let's talk about the Hydra. It has heads. You'll be fighting four at once, and each head will be unique, no duplicates. But while there are only four heads in the fight at a time, there are six heads total, and the other two heads are waiting in the sidelines. Every month will be a new Hydra rotation. It'll switch out each head's affinity and change the four starter heads. And when we have more than six heads to choose from, it'll also mean leaving some heads out of the rotation entirely. Okay, fighting the Hydra. When a Hydra's head HP hits zero, they're decapitated. This causes a decapitation effect, a special bonus that's unique based on which type of head you killed. Once a head's been decapitated, it leaves behind an exposed neck, which can still take damage. Lots of damage, actually, so hit it with everything you've got before, you guessed it, the Hydra grows back a new head. Exposed necks are immune to buffs and nearly immune to poison debuffs, but everything else works just fine. Which head grows back is determined randomly. On easier difficulties, it'll probably be the same head you killed. But remember, there'll always be another two heads. And there's a chance when an exposed neck grows a fresh head, it will be a different head than the one you originally killed. You'll need to improvise. Regardless of which head grows back, it will have a new Serpent's Will buff until the end of its first turn, reducing all damage it takes by 75%. Alright, next up, let's talk about consumption. The Hydra eats people. Every so often, one of your champions will be marked with the mark of the Hydra. Later, one of the heads will straight up eat the marked champion. However, it'll take a few turns to digest them. Deal enough damage to the head while your champion is being digested, and it will vomit them back up. Take too long, though, and your unlucky champion will be consumed. That means they're dead, no revives, completely gone from battle. So if a champion gets eaten, hit the head responsible hard and fast if you want your guy back. All right, that's the Hydra in general. Let's talk about those six heads. First up, the Head of Decay. Its default attack, Agonizing Jaws, targets whichever champion has the least HP, and puts a heal reduction debuff on them. It will also remove all debuffs from its fellow heads with Speed of Decay. Its almighty DK passive skill also messes with your healing. Any champion who gets healed will also have their max HP reduced by 15% of the heal, up to 75% of their max HP. Lastly, it can bring up a life barrier using its Rotten Ward skill. This cleanses the head with the least HP of all debuffs, then gives it a shield-like temporary HP barrier for several turns. This barrier can't be bypassed or removed. Damage the head to break the barrier, or the head will fully heal itself. As a bonus, if you do break the barrier first, it will stun the head it was protecting. The Head of Decay's decapitation effect, the thing that happens when its HP hits zero, is a very handy heal. Your champions heal 30% of their HP, then recover half the max HP destroyed by Almighty Decay. Lastly, the Head of Decay has a passive that reduces all incoming AoE damage by 10% for all Hydra heads. Every Hydra head has this passive, so you can expect all your AoE damage to be reduced by 40%, or more. We'll get to that. Secondly, the Head of Torment. This one is a bit more straightforward. Its default attack has a chance to place a Fear debuff on the first hit, then follows up with a second hit against all champions with a Fear of True Fear debuff. The second attack, Curse Storm, is an AoE that hurts way more if your champions are under a bunch of debuffs. Taking it down can be complicated. The Head of Torment automatically applies an unblockable, irresistible, true fear debuff on champions that attack it. Unless they have a perfect Veil buff active, bring cloakers, or a champion that can cleanse debuffs to deal with this. The Head of Torment's decapitation effect cleanses all fear and true fear debuffs from your team, and gives two random champions a perfect Veil buff for two turns. Next up, the Head of Blight. It has two AoE attacks, its default, Dripping Jaws, attacks your entire team and places three 5% poison debuffs, with a high chance of putting a leech debuff on top of that. Its other skill, Leeching Blight, also applies a 5% poison for a few turns and, if the champion has leech on them, immediately activates all poison effects. Toxic. That's not all. Its third skill, Blinding Smog, applies a new buff called Poison Cloud on its fellow heads, which makes all incoming hits count as weak hits and blocks all poison damage the heads would receive. Upside, this head is weak to fire. 
It takes double damage from HP burn debuffs, and if a head is under an HP burn debuff, it won't be protected by the poison cloud. Best of all, when you kill the head of Blight, its decapitation effect deals huge damage to any other heads under HP burn. Pro tip, you can use the Affinity Breaker set to bypass the poison cloud 20% of the time. Now, let's look at the main tank the Hydra can bring to the field. The Head of Suffering. Its basic attack is simple. Crippling Jaws lashes out at all your champions and puts a weakened debuff on them, as long as they don't already have Strengthen. Its second skill, Thirst for Pain, puts an ally protection buff on all other heads, puts a reflect damage buff on itself, and provokes your champion with the highest crit damage. It basically tries to rob you of your main nuker. Finally, Share Sufferings is where the Head of Suffering gets its name. It places a new debuff, Pain Link, on one of your champions, which causes them to take 15% of all the damage that the Head of Suffering takes. Fortunately, this debuff can be cleansed or countered with block damage or high resistance. Its passive skill, Almighty Suffering, increases all heads' resistance by 50. And, even worse, its AoE damage reduction boost is 30% instead of 10%. While this thing is alive, AoE damage is reduced by up to a crippling 60%, if you include the passives from the other three heads. Once you decapitate it, though, your entire team gets a shield equal to 30% of their max HP, which can seriously come in clutch if you time it right. Next up is the thief of this viper pit, the Head of Mischief. Its default attack, Thieving Jaws, targets the champion with the most buffs, then steals all those buffs along with 50% of the champion's turn meter. Its second attack, Spoils of Mischief, spreads the pilfered buffs onto all other heads, setting their durations to two turns. Killing it can be quite the challenge. With its Almighty Mischief passive, the Head of Mischief has a 75% chance of redirecting any incoming attack to another Hydra head. The only way to prevent that is placing a Hex debuff on it, or try to rely on AoE attacks, which can't be redirected. Though the damage will be reduced, potentially by a whole lot, depending on the other heads you're fighting. Still, it's not hopeless. Your champions can resist the Head of Mischief stealing their buffs, and they can remove those buffs from the Hydra if they get spread around, or before they get spread in the first place. You can also put block buffs on this slithering thief, so even if it does go for your buffs, it will just remove them instead of stealing them. The Head of Mischief's decapitation effect causes all other heads to lose 100% of their turn meter, which is awesome. Last of the heads is the Hydra's main damage dealer. You won't like the Head of Wrath when it's angry, and it's always angry. Its default attack is pretty standard, hitting all champions hard and putting a 50% decrease attack debuff on everyone. Either block, cleanse, or resist that debuff if you want to keep your damage up. Then the Head of Wrath does something unusual. It makes itself a target. Its second skill, Furious Roar, provokes your entire team for a turn and buffs itself with a 50% increase attack. Sadly, taking damage is how this head deals damage. Every time it gets hit, it builds up stacks of its Vengeance counter. When it has 15 stacks, it activates Almighty Wrath, which gives it a block debuffs and reflect damage buff. Then a new super strong buff called, you guessed it, Vengeance, which quadruples its attack power for a turn. Then it hits you with all that quadrupled strength, and it still has Vengeance for its next turn on top of that. It won't build up stacks on its counter while Vengeance is up, but the downside is that the head will probably kill you with it. You'll want champions who can deal massive damage with single-hit skills so they can minimize the number of stacks they add to the Vengeance counter, as well as healers or buffers who can put your entire team under block damage. The Head of Wrath's decapitation effect deals heavy damage to the rest of the Hydra. That damage is significantly increased if you can kill the Head of Wrath while it's under the Vengeance buff. And that's it for today, folks. Whew. Remember, the Hydra's heads might be dangerous on their own, but it's the combos that really make it deadly. It should be a tough and fun challenge, but the rewards will be worth it. We look forward to seeing how you tackle this new clan boss. Until then, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Happy raiding!